<laughs> yeah. I have like 32 tabs open in this window. I am fully prepared for this one, you can tell. <laughs> it means you have everything in your head, right? It means I have nothing. I wasn't prepared for this one at all. But I do want my notes. Yeah. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to move it over here. <laughs> but. Very loud. <clears throat> I need a wig. You have a wig. Yeah, you don't wear it. Hmm? It's locked up. It's that. It's not. Oh, it's loading. See the little bars up there? No. <laughs> oh, well, they're there. And I mean it's loading. Are we live? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Okay. So, are you, you ready for the recording yeah. part? All right. Welcome to Hard Shots by Six Pack Philosophy with Mike and John. I'm Anastasia, and in this episode, we're discussing the tax-exempt status of churches and whether or not it is a violation of the First Amendment. So... It's kind of a uh, sequel to our previous podcast. Oh, yeah, it is. So, um, on our main thread, Six Pack Philosophy, um, we were discussing... Uh, the separation of church and state, essentially. And we kind of left it with a cliffhanger um, and decided that we were going to actually do a hard shot on tax-exempt status of churches um, because we felt like it probably warranted a little bit more time than we were going to be able to give it in that episode. So um, if you want to backtrack, you can go ahead and save this episode in your podcast platform, and you can find, if you haven't already, Six Pack Philosophy, and you can actually listen to that episode and then come back and see kind of where we left off there and start here with this one. Or you can do the other way around. I'm not going to stop you. Whatever you like. Whatever you like. Exactly. So where are we going to start with this? Well, um, I guess we can start with kind of an explanation. So um, churches, typically, though not all of them, um, are 501c3 tax-exempt organizations. Uh, this means that they don't have to pay um, taxes that a corporation would normally have to pay and that any donations to that corporate or to that church are tax deductible on the um, part of the donor. Um, now the question here is that I wanted to take a look at is um, does the government when they make the decision to allow an organization to be tax exempt or not um, do they then violate the no preference clause of the first amendment um, by basically picking, choosing which religions get to be tax-exempt and which ones don't. Well, but do they pick and choose? How hard is it to become a 501c3? I mean, if, if there's Christian religions and there's Jewish religions and there's Muslim religions and, all, and it's not something that's difficult to do, then I don't think they are violating a no-preference. Well, you know, on that note, um, first of all, the organization they pick to choose what is and isn't a religion is highly unequipped to do so. It's the IRS. Yeah. Well, IRS is highly unequipped to do anything. Well, you're right. As they acknowledge themselves. Yeah, yeah. And so, first of all, uh, you can argue that it's easy. It's really easy for certain groups. Scientology, and you can agree with them, disagree with them, and disagree with their methodologies here, but in order to get their tax exempt status, in order to not pay the billions of dollars in back taxes they owed, they got every one of their members to bring individual lawsuits against the IRS and their members until the IRS, in a, in a closed room deal, finally said, all right, can we make this all go away? Because there was like thousands of these things that had to go through the courts. And all of a sudden, the lawsuits and went away, and they were declared tax exempt. So, it can be more difficult than than okay. one might imagine. Okay, interesting. So, the characteristics to be um, that a an organization has to meet, although they don't have to meet all of these, they they do have to meet most of them, and there are some that have specific um, preference over others. Um, in order to be considered a 501c3 religious organization, you have to have a distinct legal existence, a recognized creed and form of worship, a definite and distinct ecclesiastical government, 
a formal code of doctrine and discipline, <coughs> a distinct religious history, a membership not associated with any other church or denomination, ordained ministers ministering to the congregation, ordained ministered sel ministers selected after completing prescribed courses of study, a literature of its own, established places of worship, regular congregations, regular religious services, Sunday schools for the religious instruction of the young, and schools for the preparation of ministers. And after you're done with all that, you just fill out a quick little form, and you <laughs> well, I think the, uh, with the exception of the prescribed course of studies for your ministers, we qualify. Yeah. As, uh, as a, uh, a, you, you know, a, a, a six-pack philosophies little cult here. Well, a membership not associated with any other church or denomination, I think would require that none of us identify as any particular religion, Christian, that would be Muslim, tough. That would be tough. Buddhist, agnostic, atheist, any does, of that. The, does, the state, the, the, does the state declare agnosticism and atheism a religion? <laughs> That's a whole other thing. And no, the answer is no. Uh, the state doesn't. Um, there are a lot of people out there arguing that atheism is a religion. I vehemently disagree with that. And I, I don't. I think to... atheism is a religion, but, uh, but I understand. You look at the word atheist. No, well, I understand what the word is, but you're, there, there's, still, there's still an organized court system of belief. There's still something there. I think it is a religion. Uh, but, you know, I, I define religion very broad. We saw in the last one, I said oh, socialism yeah, yeah. and capitalism are religions. That so, is a good point. You did say um, that. Okay. You know, believing in a higher power. Okay. I think that that's what that is. So, mm. it's interesting. It's interesting. Interesting. Uh, it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but back, back to this idea. Uh, right. Uh, I don't know. What, what is the value of allowing a, uh, the value to society of allowing a church to maintain its tax-exempt status? Okay, so the really interesting thing here is that if an organization is considered a 501c3 religious organization, they are actually then barred from donating to political candidates, uh, publicly endorsing candidates. From their, their ministers are barred from publicly endorsing candidates um, from, the pulpit. from the pulpit, yes, um, or in... Um, in the execution of duties as of the duties of their position, um, and so there is the argument that maintaining tax exempt status of churches would prevent them from being able to lobby the legislature, being able to endorse well, candidates, and things and, like and that. And there have been churches that have chosen not to do that, it, right? So, so they could continue to to do political action. Yeah, which I, I I've got a, I've got a lot of respect for that. They've chosen Absolutely. not to participate in that system in order to uh, to do something. Right. <clears throat> well, and I will say this: um, in the research that I was doing on this particular issue, a lot of the arguments that I found um, took the perspective that if you were trying to remove the tax exempt status from a church, that you were actually wanting to. Um, to kind of force the church out of existence. Dry up their funding. It is exactly. an attack. Yeah, that, that this was some kind of attack. I think a lot of times it is. I think for some, from some perspectives, for some people it is. Um, however, I can tell you this for myself, um, and this is actually kind of where this whole idea, wanting to talk about this, spurred, um, even beyond just the consideration of churches as tax-exempt organizations, was um, whenever a minister um, performs a marriage ceremony, the wording that they use is the power vested in me by the state of. And I have a serious problem with that. Um, well, right now it is vested in them by the state. It is. And part of that is their status as a religious organization as ordained by the government. Well, I don't think they're ordained by the government, but I understand where you're coming from. Yeah, I, I see your point. Yeah. Um, and for myself, um, I, I look at any, any church and I say, why are, you, um, why are you okay with saying that the government is the higher power that allows you to bond two people in holy matrimony? And I think there's a problem with that. If you believe that God is truly your higher power, the entity to which you are I, I, wholly responsible. I, I don't. I don't think that's that's what they're saying. I think what they're saying is the legal document 
has been approved by the state. I think that's all they're saying with that, and, and I think you read too much into it. Uh, when I first heard it, I was on your side already. I was, yeah, I, I'm with you. But the more I'm thinking about this, I really think that that, that, that verbiage, by the power vested in me, by the power of the state, or by the state of Texas, or mm -hmm. state of whatever, is just saying the state of Texas has said I can legally do this contract. It's not any different than a notary public's doing something. The state of Texas has said you have the right to do this. The state of Texas has also said that notary publics can do it and sh captains of ships can do it. Yeah. It's just, it's just saying this is legal. Yeah, and I don't have I, a problem with that. And I get that, except that um, I think you're doing a very dangerous, well, I say very dangerous, that I guess is kind of a loose term, um, but I think you're doing something that, as a religious organization, you should not do. And you're mixing the authority of God with the authority of government. I don't think you're you are. You're mixing a religious ceremony and a legal document. I, don't, I, 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 I see where you're coming from, but I don't think. I think what they're doing is they're saying, this is a religious ceremony. I'm the religious leader. I am also authorized to sign this contract saying that uh, you know, you know, by, by the state of Texas. It, it, it would be no different than if, if they were a notary public or if they were... Uh, you know, a captain of a ship. It's not any different to me, uh, and and I, I, I'm surprised that I'm there because five minutes ago coming into here, I didn't think that's where I'd be. But hearing it out loud, I don't think it's I don't think it's it's as complicated as, as you're making it sound. Well, and I personally, I don't have a problem with them necessarily being authorized by the government to execute this legal document. The problem is the government's involved in it at all. Well, there is that. Um, but I don't think that those two should be one uh, one activity. And I, I, again, I, I don't think they are. I think you have... They the, absolutely I, I, are. I, I disagree. I think you have the religious ceremony and I'm going to file the paperwork that says it's a legal document. I think that's all they're saying. I'm still your religious leader. This is a religious ceremony. But when it's over, it's going to be legal. I'm going to sign this paper, and I'm going to turn it into the to the county. Well, and that's fine. Um, and I, I get what you're saying there. I do. Um, however, within the religious ceremony, they are acknowledging the that power is being given to them to bond two people in marriage by a government, uh, not yeah. by their deity. I, I, I see that. I see the verbiage, and I, and I understand. I, I really do. To me, it's the equivalent of the guy that talks too fast in the, in the drug commercial on TV. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I, 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 I've got to get this legal part out, but this is still a, a commercial. Well, i got to get this legal part out, but it's still a religious ceremony. <laughs> uh, and, and again, I'm surprised I'm there because I didn't think I was. I've always been right where you are, mm -hmm. but hearing it out loud here, I just, I, I'm just i seeing, I understand Okay. I, I tend to agree with the mistress here, but with all that said, uh, let's talk about taxes. Okay. About that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we came here for, right? Oh, why, why push the, the envelope so far, right? Right. Uh, here, here's my question. Do you have a problem, just, just, just purely philosophically, let's not go any deeper yet, let's just go pure philosophically, Philosophy. I thought the philosophy was pretty deep. Do you have a well? Let's, let's not go into <laughs> I'm just legal joking. arguments. Okay. The philosophy is probably deeper than legal <laughs> arguments. Do you have a problem with churches being tax exempt for their religious purposes? Yes. I want everybody to be tax exempt. Well, okay, okay, but <laughs> I, well, the second part of that question is: mm -hmm. Do you have a problem with charities being tax exempt? No. Okay. So, so, so he, he, here's where I come down because, because again, I'm, I'm, I'm working my way through this mm -hmm. as we go through it. I do not have a problem with churches being tax exempt so long as that that money is being used for, for you know for charitable purposes and that money is not being used for political purposes. Okay. I do have a problem with churches being tax exempt and then. Uh, uh, preaching from or uh, preaching politics from the pulpit, mm -hmm. because to me at that point you, you you've changed your job. Right. If your church is raising money and your church is it, it is going to send people to uh, you, you know to, to go feed the poor people in South America or the Caribbean, you know what that should be tax exempt. Now the solution may be instead of the church being tax exempt, the church the church creating a separate charity that's tax exempt. Mm -hmm. That may be the way around it. Right. But as long as they're not mixing their politics, 
I don't have an issue with churches being tax exempt. I do have a problem with with preaching from the pulpit, as we know happens all the time. I've seen it in my own churches. So you have a problem with them switching seamlessly from a message from the Bible, for example, to um, advocating for certain politicians um, and, and that, that's another and place where I've got an issue I have reaching a problem, into the realm of government I have a problem like with advocating marriage. for politicians I don't have a problem with advocating for principles if your religion says that you shouldn't uh, you know, that, that, that abortion is wrong your religion says that's wrong I have no problem with you standing up and saying abortion mm-hmm. is wrong I have a problem with you standing up and saying vote, vote against John Smith because he supports this because now you're, 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 you've, you've crossed that line in my mind. What about vote against Prop 9? I think I'd be okay with it if that, if that, proposition, if that proposition was wholly against your doctrine. I don't, I don't know. I'm, trying, I'm still working my way through this. Interesting. Uh, because, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm finding myself in a place I didn't think I was going to find myself. Mm-hmm. To, but talking through this... I, I'm and, and trying to draw the comparison between these and, and you know we just got through talking about freedom of religion and we've talked about freedom of speech and I'm looking at this and I'm going there's lots of lines crossing here yeah and I don't know where that line is so y'all help me out here because I I, 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 I need it I need to talk about this to see where I am so uh, you asked a question earlier and your question was do you have a problem with religions, religious organizations being exempt for their religion, I said, yes. I have a problem with religious organizations being exempt by virtue of their religion. Now, I have a problem with taxes, but that's a different podcast. Yeah. Right. We're going to assume now that taxes are, are just are there, and we're, we're talking about exemptions. And I think you hit the nail on the head. I was actually planning on bringing this up. If they want to, to do a charitable cause, I think they should have to go through the same paperwork that every other organization who does anything charitable or anything that, that is exempt has to go through and, well, and show where their money's being spent, show how they're, they're, they're going through that, that purpose, what they're doing to be charitable. They can't say, well, I'm charitable, you know, because I can't do that. I can't do that as an individual. They have to go through the same process okay, that but, every other charity does. But uh, I, I'm looking at this and going charities that, that, that raise this money. That money doesn't all go to the, back to the charity. That money goes to pr- preserving the building. But to, they have to, to, to account the for it. Well, they, they do, but so do the churches. Yeah. No, but it the is churches. A, the, and it is a lot harder to audit a church. It's very hard to audit a church. It's extremely but it's happening. Hard. It's happened a lot recently. And the other thing is that nearly every other charitable organization has to renew their status periodically. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if a church is granted 501c3 religious organization status, that is perpetual. Past the life of the founders, it it is in perpetuity, period. That, that's a problem. That's it a is. Problem. And, and I can accept that. I so can accept that. I think they have to go through the same thing every other organization has to go through. And I think if we did it that way, if the churches wanted to make their church a 501c3, that'd be fine. But I think it'd be dumb. I think the smart thing for them to do would be to do what you said and create a separate organization who does charity and then give a significant portion of their income to that charity and they can do good work and that is all exempt income. Now, if they want to say our whole organization is exempt, they have to report everything well, and, and, and they're barred in a lot of ways that... Yeah, yeah, but my, my question comes down to this, this idea what is the difference if you know if my church is raising money to uh, and, and I, I may already know this, my church is raising money to feed the homeless somewhere. Mm-hmm. Why can't my church then write off their 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 expenses for their building and write off the the preacher that's preaching the stuff to to, to do that? Well, why why what's the difference here? So I mean, they so they can to me they can do that. If they wanted to keep their organization together, it's, it's how they choose to structure their organization. But if they do that, the same restrictions that are on every other 501c3 apply to that church. I think the smarter thing to do would be to create a separate organization that feeds the homeless and then charge them for the use of the building, but then donate that money back and just make that tax exempt money. 
Yeah, yeah. It's I think that the would same be, game that politicians play whenever they, they, they're raising money. Yeah. I think that would be the smarter thing to do. Now, if they want to do it the other way, whatever. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now, here's a question. So one of the things that I said earlier was that 501c3 religious organization status um, bars these organizations from lobbying, from uh, politicking at the pulpit, um, from funding campaigns and all of that stuff. Should churches be barred from those activities? Should churches be barred from talking politics? Um, I, I, I don't know because I'm, I'm really struggling at, at the difference between freedom of speech and freedom of religion here. Mm-hmm. Freedom no. From religion. Uh, I, I, I don't think they should. I don't think they should, but, but I'm looking at this other side of it, the tax side of it, and I'm going, well, you know, if it's subsidized by the people mm-hmm. and, you're, and, and you're preaching against somebody, you're subsidizing something against. I, I don't know what the answer well, is. Well, and that's where I have an issue with the subsidy, not the talk. Mm-hmm. Now, you could go the other way with it and say, I don't have an issue with the subsidy. I have an issue with, with the way you're talking. Yeah. Uh, and and I, could, I could see that as philosophically consistent. But for me, the issue is with the, uh, the subsidy. Yeah. And I, right. I think that that can be pointed to in the First Amendment. Well, mm-hmm. you know, the, you know, e- e- even if you are a a, a devout believer, uh, and, and again, I, I do consider myself a Christian, uh, render under Caesar what is Caesar's. Exactly. Uh, you know, th- those are Jesus's words. Does uh, that count just for individuals, or should it count for the church as well? Yeah, that, that, that's interesting. That's interesting to me. Uh, I, I find that I find that interesting. Um, I where I am, I think, is 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 kind of where I. Where I was when I came into this, I, and, and, and talking my way through this, is uh, you know the church itself may not uh, should should be should be tax exempt, but uh, but the churches should be free to to, to create other uh, other charitable organizations. I think that makes sense. So uh, I, I'm not sure I heard you right. Did you say the tax the churches should or should not no, should be ta- not the churches should, not. Okay. should be paying taxes on okay. what they what they get render under Caesar. Uh, but I don't have a problem with a church creating a charity. Yes, uh, I think that I think that would be smart. I think that makes sense. Well, and and you know, going back to the Bible, and you know, we're talking about mostly Christian churches here, but this could apply to any religion. Yeah, you know, but um, a, a mosque, a, a temple. Anyway, um, it, it talks about what a church is, and, and it says it's it's when two or more gather. It's a body of believers. Yeah, yeah a, a body of believers. So. Anything that Jesus said that that applies to the individual, therefore, sh- does apply to the church because the church, in their religious view, <sighs> is not the separate corporation or entity or building. Not the building, yeah. It's a group of people gathered. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So, um, if you look at tax exemption status for churches as a subsidy, and, and I think you can do that when you say if they were not tax exempt they would be paying these funds in not paying these funds they are essentially getting what would be like a tax refund of whatever it is that they would be paying in taxes were they not exempt but you steal everyone's money but one person you effectively gave him money exactly. because you, you increase the scarcity of the resource yeah exactly yeah. so you look at this as a subsidy now these organizations because they're getting this subsidy of tax exempt status are not allowed to lobby the legislature, uh, fund campaigns, things like that. However, they are actually one of the only um, organizations that are given subsidies with this particular restriction. Um, Farmers who get crop subsidies, uh, subsidies, that's a B, not a P. (laughs) Anyway, um, so they are not barred from... Uh, contributing to political campaigns. They are not barred from speaking politically. Um, the lobbying organizations... Oh, are the lobbying organizations taxed? I think they are, yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah, so the lobbying organizations are taxed, and so they do have the freedom to do this. But the people who are receiving 
these other these other subsidies. Well, Planned Parenthood. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was hey, there saying, you go. You can look at the individuals who, who get very you know parents. Yeah. Parents get tax breaks all the time for their children. Yeah. And they're not told you know well you can't donate to a candidate or you can't go speak for you know yeah. you can't advocate for yeah. a candidate. Well, but but we, it goes back to the discussion we had on the uh, uh, freedom of religion podcast. Um, when you're talking about this, you've got to look at the wording of the Constitution. And okay. I want to look at that. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. Okay. If you're in a situation where you are making it easier or harder through the tax code mm-hmm. to open a church, is Congress making a law involving the establishment of religion? Yeah, I think if you're if you're making it easier, and and I think you you talked about making it harder, you you look at the other clause, uh, or or, yeah, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Yeah, and when you make it harder for any religion, you you know anything you tax, you necessarily uh, decrease. Um, so I I would I would agree. So under the wording of the Constitution, what what you know what what's the constitutional principle here? Should you be should you be tax exempting uh, churches? So I, I think constitutionally you have to you have to go to equality under the law. I don't think you should be taxing okay uh, a lot of things. But if you're going to accept a tax exist, you have to look I, at equality. I will tell you one place where I think that 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 that, that the two of your views is, is very strong. Uh, and that's on the two tests that we talked about right. under the no preference doctrine. Exactly. Uh, clearly, clearly, the uh, the Congress is giving preference to some churches over others uh, through, through through their tax status. Yeah. Well, you know, um, you look at various different um, denominations of Christianity, and um, looking at some of the history of. Um, when the organiz- or when the religion was founded and when it was recognized by the state, it, it appeared that um, they didn't have a whole lot of trouble, or at least it didn't take a long time to get through this system. Um, and then you look at religions like Scientology. You look at uh, what is it, the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster? That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's headquartered in um, Las Vegas, Nevada. It, by the way, it is headquartered in Vegas, and. Um, that one actually has been around for a really, <clears throat> I, I say a really long time. It's been around for longer than yeah, I thought it yeah. was and was only actually recently acknowledged by the government. It's been acknowledged by the government, by the way. <laughs> um, you can get ordained as a minister um, to perform. Yeah, I, I believe I believe Pid Gillette was recently ordained in that, uh, uh, which I found hilarious. One of our friends has actually been ordained as a, yeah. a minister under the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Yeah. Um, and so... I think you can illustrate through that um, that certain churches, they absolutely are showing a preference. Right. I, I want to run through the three tests that we talked about in the, the freedom of religion uh, mm-hmm. uh, and, and see how it falls. Because I think this, uh, just looking at this, I think this cleared my whole mind up, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, these are the three tests that were outlined in the, in the Supreme Court case, Lemon versus Kurtzman, okay? Mm-hmm. So we're talking about the idea of should, should churches have tax-exempt status. And three precedents have been used again. Yeah, yeah, and three precedents, which I'm not <laughs> crazy about, but but, but let, let, let's, let's put it to the Supreme Court's test. Okay. Because I want to see what, what I think the Supreme Court, if they logically follow their own arguments, what, mm-hmm. what would they say? Number one, is there a secular, a secular legislative purpose for it? Is there a secular legislative purpose for, for, for giving, the taxation? For granting tax-exempt status to churches. I no. don't think so. No, no, no clearly not. It doesn't not. pass. So it, it hasn't passed on the first one. The second one, is its primary effect neither to advance nor inhibit religion? No. no. Absolutely. In fact, it, the opposite. It's there to advance, so it fails that one. Or and inhibit. The, and the third, does it avoid excessive government entanglement? No. no the exact no, opposite. No, yeah. the exact opposite. All three tests, it fails. I'm with you. Let, let's strike it. Absolutely. So, now we get to move to, like, take tax-exempt status away from churches. It's not that we don't like them. It's well, not a tax. It's, it's, it's not. unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I, know, I, I, you know, we're talking our way through this helps me out, so yeah. I, I appreciate this. Well, you know, and I can say this for myself. I've been advocating against tax-exempt status for churches for a while, <laughs> um, and... The, the way that I tend to try to do this is speaking to people of religious faiths um, and, and convincing them as to 
why their church should not, or, or sh- yeah, should not be tax exempt. Yeah. Um, you know, I what I would love to see is churches voluntarily saying we're not going to do this. This is against our beliefs. Um, you know, we want to render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. We want to um, separate ourselves. We want to remove this entanglement between our church and government. Um, you know, we want to meet the lemon test. Um, and, and churches are doing that. I mean, make some no of them are. About it. There yeah. are churches out there that are saying, we want to be able to... We want to be able to speak speak our mind freely. We want to be able to to be politically active, and we are going to give up that tax exempt status in order in order to do that. Exactly. Um, so oh, you're burping in the microphone. <laughs> that's not good. I got enough gas over here to go to Pittsburgh. <laughs> so um, that's what I would like to see. Um, now, I would support a law being passed that would remove tax exemption for churches, um, but I'd rather do it voluntarily. <laughs> I find it interesting. I, I I started here in the same spot I finished, and then I kind of moved over because as we talked about things, right. questioned it, and then I came right back to where I started. Well, I mean, from, but so. I think that's beautiful because you know you, you you really got to test your own beliefs, and you 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 found that after you you did a thorough test that you you moved in the middle of. You, you came back to where you, you I think that speaks yeah. to your beliefs. Yeah, you, 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 know, you have to be honest. You have to be willing to question yourself. And that's yeah. part of what this show is about. Question everything. Nothing that you've been told your whole life or believed your whole life is holy or sanct, or, 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 or sanctimonious. What's the word? I don't know. My word is not working. Sacred. That's the word I'm looking for. Question everything and see where you are at the end of it. Yeah. Well, you know, and I have to say, you know, in this talk, I wavered a little bit myself. Um but I think the thing that really sealed the deal was the lemon test. You know, when you take a look at that and you compare that test to the First Amendment and what it says about religion, I think it becomes very clear that it is unconstitutional. Can it be extremely clear? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, that it is unconstitutional for churches to be tax exempt. I'm glad you corrected her. That was a very good job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Could it be an extremely good job? And it wasn't that no, it was far. A very good job. <laughs> uh, I love you guys. Anyway, sometimes. <laughs> is there anything else we've got to say on this? Uh, no, I think that's it. Uh, we have uh, one or two people on Periscope. Um, a few of them were asking questions earlier, so do we want to do this? it? We d- well, we did, um, but we can do a little bit of AMA afterwards, not right. necessarily on the show. And if someone else wants to ask questions, they could come on to the show uh, while we're broadcasting. They could follow us on Periscope. Hell yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's do that afterwards. Let's go ahead and close this out. And All right. If you want the extra content, catch us on Periscope. Very Sounds cool. good. Sounds good. So anyway, um, you can find us on the web at sixpackphilosophy.com. That's S I X packphilosophy.com you can also find us on social media by searching six pack philosophy either the word six or the number um we are on all your favorite podcast platforms or rather we're on a lot of podcast platforms but if we're not on your favorite send us an email at contact us at six pack philosophy.com and let us know where you want us to be and we'll try to get there um also you can watch us record live on periscope uh, by searching the number six pack philosophy or sorry at the number six pack philosophy and uh, we just started a youtube channel where we're going to be posting the recording of our recordings <laughs> and and what else oh and that google plus page yeah, no, uh, i, I was google gonna go with porn oh, oh, oh porn yes porn. 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 there's porn. Porn, porn so anyway uh cheers guys and we'll catch you next time cheers thank you guys thank you ding so right. Periscope. Periscope. Wow. <laughs> uh, John said you guys had some question. What's going on? Well, uh, a lot of people left, but earlier there was like, apparently you were passing the lemon test and failing the libertarian purity test. Like, oh, was she? Was oh, she? yeah. You were getting called out. For what? Uh, they said her, her her laptop has a sticker that says libertarian, but what she's saying doesn't espouse that. And they, they, they came back and said, well, she follows Kokesh, so maybe I'm wrong. Google voluntarism. Oh yeah, cool, they were cool. calling you out. What's that supposed to mean? It means you're supposed to Google voluntarism. I've googled yeah. voluntarism. Oh. Nobody called me out there. I so ended I am that incredibly saying, consistent. I ended that saying like I want voluntarism. Like how the fuck did I mess that up? I don't know. 
uh, I, I'm just waiting for somebody to get on there and call me the crazy statist on every, every episode. So I'm going to find who that was. No, I it's guess I'm not. probably somebody you know. It is somebody I know. I know it is. Yeah. No, they, they, were, they were definitely calling it, you. It was, it was John over here on his phone sending you messages. That's what it was. Hmm. Well, it looks like everyone's left. Do y'all want to hang around on this? And, nah, uh, nah, nah, let's not get really. out of here. Right. Hey, that was a good time, guys. It was. Just tease the, the periscope so. Yeah, who the fuck was that? Oh. <laughs> you can't look they back. didn't say anything about me. I mean, I was just talking about you. Oh, Lord. I only drank one of those IPAs. I didn't even drink one.